What's up everybody and welcome back to the Minute Channel. Today we are going to be talking about Shin Megami Tensei 5. It should be around the corner, right? At some point we want to get that game. So today we're going to be doing 5 things that I want to see in Shin Megami Tensei 5. Or at least at least make a return in some kind of way. So I'm using most of my ideas from Shin Megami Tensei 4, 5 and 3. I'm sorry, 4, Apocalypse and 3. But uh, this can be applied to the Shin Megami Tensei as well. It's just because I'm, <laughs> I've been recently playing 4 and I'm, um, I'm Apocalypse. So I kind of, kind of, kind of, most of my ideas come from that, but Nocturne is coming soon and they do have some of the same issues slash good stuff as well. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So number one is the battle system. Now the battle system in SMT4 and Apocalypse and all the other 3DS games is good. However, it's limited by the hardware that they are played on, which is the 3DS. The 3DS is not super strong. It's never meant to be super strong. So the majority of the time, what you're going to get is this little screen where you have the battle, uh, the battles going on and you can just see the pictures and they're attacking and everything like that in front of the character and everything. Now, this is a typical uh, issue with a lot of the uh, handheld games that they made not only Atlas, there's a lot of publishers that are they make uh, RPGs that have to encounter this issue when they're doing games for handheld games. Now however the good things, the good news is Shin Megami Tensei 5 is coming out on the Switch who is hybrid between a console and a handheld and it does handle graphics pretty okay. In fact a lot of the games you can even play games like Doom so there's uh, absolutely no reason why the uh, battle system cannot improve and change in that kind of aspect. Now, I'm just looking at uh, talking about the visuals here. I think the game in, ten, in terms of battle systems is good. Uh, one of the features that I love for SMT4, and I know some people hated it. In fact, while I was playing the game, some people were like, man, I hate this smirk system. So in SMT4 and 5, uh, and I'm sorry, I keep saying 5. I mean uh, Apocalypse because it's a sequel to it. I don't know why I keep saying 5. Um, the sequel to it, uh, what they do is whenever you hit a weakness, it does kind of does this smirk thing, with, which kind of makes you uh, able to avoid an attack, but also uh, allows you to attack multiple times and you can actually abuse this system to uh, attack multiple times. I mean there's this been times where I can beat a boss battle within two or three turns because I'm just continuously abusing that system and everything. The bad news about this is whatever you can do the enemy can also do. They can also abuse the system and make it so that you never get a turn. They'll they'll destroy the shit out of you if they hit your weaknesses and hit your weaknesses over and over again. That it's actually a system that I love. This is a system that I want them to continue to go. I know some people mention in the comments to me or you know, tell me, man, I hate the smirk system. I love it. I think it's fantastic, especially because, like I said, you can abuse the hell out of the system if you know what you're doing. That's one of the things that I actually quite enjoy the most. Uh, I, I feel like this is one of those things that um, if you know what you're doing, you're going to have a pretty good time with the game. Not in a bad way, just in a good, interesting way. The battles are really cool. Uh, every battle, even the first few battles when you're in, in the uh, first few dungeons, even on Shin Megami Tensei 3, it's, it's kind of like a learning strategy for you. You start learning the mechanics of the game. The game naturally is beating the crap out of you because it wants you to learn the mechanics that it has. SMT3 it focuses a lot on buffs and debuffs and they want you to focus and learn how to use those correctly. That's why the first battle is the way that it is. That's why a lot of the battles like the Minotaur or the even Medusa later on, those battles are meant for you to learn the smirk system. They're meant for you to learn how to apply weakness correctly and that's why I love this kind of system because it really teaches you the mechanic but at the same time it's extremely punishing if you're not learning how you're supposed to be learning how to play the game uh, so I, I enjoy that quite a bit I, I love that now my next point is the conversation system now conversation system in Shin Megami Tensei is it's a hit or miss. Some games have a good conversation system, some don't. Some have applied some better mechanics to others, some don't. For example, Persona 1 and 2 have terrible, terrible, terrible conversation systems. We're not even going to talk about those. Persona 5 brought it back, but it's still not really good. It's really ambiguous, and sometimes you don't even know what you're doing. Um, now, the conversation system in Shin Megami Tensei 4, it's a little bit on the, on the hit or miss because you don't really know. You're just, asking, you're just literally flipping a coin to see if you can get this demon to do your bidding or not. So Sometimes they'll just abuse you, take your money, your health, your items, and then leave. You know, so that's one of the things that I don't really like. I feel like 
if we had more guidance as far as like what conversation is going forward and everything would be nice i'm not saying we need a whole lot of help or anything like that you can recruit plenty of plenty of demons however I would like something that really just allows you for a much deeper conversation and everything like that. Not a lot of storytelling or anything like that, but just something a little bit more in depth that you can kind of uh, do. One thing that I really like about the conversation system on SMT4 and uh, Apocalypse, however, is the way that they are doing where one, whenever you have recruited over your demon and you have a conversation with them, they will give you items, they will give you money, they will heal you, they will heal your SP. There's all these different things that they can do. In fact, one time I was trying to recruit a demon that I already had recruited and he was like okay well I can't go with you because I'm already your friend here is this other demon take it with you and I was like wow I really got another demon uh, based out of like trying just to talk to this person um, that is pretty interesting I really love the idea of the way that they have done the conversation systems I want them to just improve a little bit better especially again whenever you're trying to recruit a demon the first time and you're like I have, I'm literally playing rock paper scissors with this guy I have no idea what he wants and if feels awful it really does but i feel like this this system can be improved in so many kind of ways and i'm just excited to see how they're gonna fix this for the next game anyway moving up at uh, number three we're gonna talk about the uh balance uh, the, uh, the stats because this is something pretty interesting that uh, i found uh over time when i was just uh, playing the game, I'm like, there's there's an issue with the game. And I want to say it's like a really balancing issue or anything like that. But SMT4 and uh, Apocalypse make it so that you can make a magic run. Literally, what it means is that you can focus all of your stat points on one single thing, which is magic and maybe agility if you don't want to get hit or anything like that. And you can go through the entire game like that. I feel like that is cool for once I, I love it i look, do it all the time and do either a physical build or a magic build and uh that's just fine to me but in, in reality that is really poor implementation of stats balancing i feel like uh, over time if you really think about it that should not be happening an rpg shouldn't just be allowing you to just dump 50 points into magic and you just, just you're basically not doing anything else and everything i feel like that's again poor implementation um the balancing in in the game i'm not saying it's super bad but once you really get to the higher levels and you had dumped you know 90 points into agility and magic and everything you're just it's just really breaking the game at that point uh, so i really wanted to fix that in some kind of way i'm not sure how to fix the balancing I'm, I'm not a developer obviously and that's not my job either but um i have noticed that a lot of people do this because they know how to exploit weaknesses and how to exploit the game overall and in fact i feel like this is an issue in some kind of way some kind of level i do feel uh, hopefully that they can fix this in some kind of way i'm very excited to see what they're gonna do um but here's how I feel about that. So moving on next, one of my other things that I have kind of an issue, and this is one I completely wanted to work on it, is the map or the mapping system on Shin Megami Tensei 5. When Shin Megami Tensei 4, 5, I'm sorry, Apocalypse 3, and many of the other app games, uh, on app games, all of the 3DS games, as well as uh, Persona 1 and 2, there's this map system where there's a layout of the map where you can kind of see it in like a top-down kind of way and everything, and you have a little sprite that you walk, move around, and this is your person. You can enter battles, you can enter buildings, you can do all the different stuff. However, it is terrible. It is not really well implemented. In fact, sometimes I'm like, I don't even know if I can walk. There's like an invisible walk, the wall right there. I, it looks like I should be able to go there, but I can't. And I encountered this problem so many times in SMT4 and it, even SMT3, although SMT3 is so barren sometimes, which is also a problem, I guess, uh, you are walking to this wasteland, which is obviously supposed to be barren at times, and at times you just don't know where to go. The game doesn't really tell you much. You're kind of like, man, well, I really wish that I could, but the map is so bad that I don't even know where to go next. Now, some people may like the mapping system um, because of its traditional and it, it reminds you of the RSMT games and everything. I particularly just want a new mapping system with new mechanics and everything like that. And I feel it can be very well implemented if done correctly. I don't know. I'm not expecting a full open world game or anything like that, but I'll be honest with you guys, I am looking at Persona 5. And I like the way that they did the traveling system. It's not completely open world. You can look smaller areas and everything, but I'm hoping something more open worldish 
where you can where you can have your actual character like uh, actually walking around places and everything like that but definitely not to the extent of a brand big open world with all these mechanics and everything like that we know she made everything say games or like that i'm not expecting anything like that 100 percent serious but at least something like Persona 5 in that sense where you have like this big open world area that you can explore and kind of, you know, like like when you go to Mementos and that kind of stuff, that's what I mean, basically. Anyway, moving up next, and my last point is the burrow system. I don't know what to call this, basically, but this is a uh, really interesting part of the game that I don't I don't think I remember seeing or not sure, but I really love the implementation of it here. Um, in fact, Persona doesn't have anything like that either, but I love it so much I want it to be implemented it everywhere that I can find. Uh, so basically this is a system where you can add additional perks to your character based on points that you get through leveling up from uh, point to point. And the Boros basically allows you to get this download, they call them apps, which is a pretty interesting uh, thing overall, but you can do things like uh, uh, making sure that you get additional uh, MP or HP or even crazy things like making so that you pay less money in the fusion uh, area you can make it so you can fuse during battle which is crazy you can do things like um, recovering SP as you walk or MP as you're walking through the uh, places or whatever there's all these different apps and implementations in fact there are some that are so broken for example you have one that you can make them evolve their skills faster and you end up getting some Free, freaking crazy skills really early on if you know how to utilize it and everything so overall this this app system is really fun it's actually one of my favorite parts to go through because you can not only can you focus on a build with stats and everything but you can also focus on another build based on all these additional uh apps that you can download and everything like that i love the system as was i thought it was genius i thought it was really interesting i'm really hoping to they either add this or add more to it or just kind of develop it in some kind of way now Persona 5 strikers i'm gonna bring strikers down <laughs> because some people haven't played it but Persona 5 strikers has a similar system to this game in fact it is uh, a different point but it does the same thing it allows you to add different mechanics and everything like that like that and i love it so much it's, it's one of the easily one of the best mechanics in the game and i really want this to continue for shimmer intensive 5 anyway that's pretty much in this video here guys just talking about five things that i want to see more on shimmer intensive 5 as we get closer to it who knows where we're gonna get it but i am super excited for this guys if new please consider liking and subscribing i'll see you guys next time